why don't we proceed then acting vice chair <laughs> Yolo? okay then i will go in my capacity as acting vice chair call the meeting to order um, and ask jay to proceed with the roll call yes uh commissioner loyola present commissioner vignolo present commissioner cleary commissioner robles present commissioner andrade present commissioner flood he's i see something in he posted i don't have sound oh okay commissioner ramaran present uh vice chair shepherd uh excused and chair de Hart not present at this moment that's weird yes <laughs> all right um commissioner so, Flood does not have I, sound i don't know if that means commissioner flood can't hear us or he just can't speak to us but um ask him so is there any volunteer do we need to i guess next on the agenda is to read the mission statement and goals unless we want to waive that for this evening i don't know i'm trying to remember what the chair does <laughs> on that particular but i think if there's no objection, I'm okay waiving the reading of the mission statement. Is that agreeable to everyone? Second. Thank you. Um, it's already indicated we have a quorum first. And I don't see any members of the public. Is that correct? That's correct. I don't see any participants? So there are only eight. So uh, I don't think we have any public comments at this time. Uh, I don't think we have any chair comments. I don't know if the chair had any comments, but. Uh, if there's no objection, I'll proceed to approval of the minutes of October 11, 2021, which I believe was in the packet mm -hmm. that was sent out for approval. Uh, so I don't know if there's any discussion, if anyone, any of the commissioners have any comments, edits, questions about the draft minutes that were sent out for approval. I'll move approval. I'll second that. I think that was Commissioner Andrade moved and Commissioner Loyola seconded. So any discussion? Hearing none, uh, I think we can do a unanimous consent to approve the meeting rather than a roll call vote. Or do we need to do a roll call vote, Jay? You put me on the spot. I think I have to say we have to do a roll call vote. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. Uh, Commissioner Loyola? Yes. Commissioner Vignolo? Uh, yes, to approve. Uh, Commissioner Robles? Yes. Commissioner Andrade, maker of the motion? Yes. Commissioner Flood, we're looking at you? Yes. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Commissioner Ramaran? Yes. And that is it. Uh, motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. So we, we can move to items for discussion uh, or action. That's item eight on the agenda would be the reports. First report would be an executive report from executive report standing committee. Uh, but with the chair and vice chair absent, uh, I guess we'll have to defer that report on the retreat um, until a future meeting. 
So then the next item would be a, the report from community relations budget personnel. Uh, I think we can skip the PS Palm Springs Police Department LGBT outreach liaison since the chair is the liaison and go right to the master calendar liaison, Commissioner Ramarin. Thank you, Commissioner Vignola. Hey, everybody. Um, yes, I, I'm really excited. One, you can imagine what happened this weekend is a lot. Um, we, we were part of the um, Palm Springs, a Greater Palm Springs Pride a Parade, and uh, we know that Chair DeHart is the, you know, the, key, <laughs> the key person behind all that. So we want to definitely congratulate him and the Greater Palm Springs Pride for an amazing weekend, uh, to be very frank. I, I only got to do a few things, including March with Lily and Glenn and, and Hugo. And um, but we're uh, and 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 the, of course the city government. But it was just a beautiful weekend, and I think um, I you know I I'm, as as a as a gay member of, of our community in Palm Springs, it's just such a it's always just wonderful because it feels like homecoming, even though it's mo mainly tourists, <laughs> which is great because the businesses were getting a lot of um, uh, you know folks there. Um, I, that's my quick thing about the pride. I appreciate um, the folks who were able to come in and help. Um, represent the uh, our, uh, Human Rights Commission for the um, the parade. We were part of the earlier portion of the parade and um, it, it was a, it's it's a it's a it's a walk, but it's definitely a, a wonderful way to get get our visibility there. And uh, thank you so much again, Commissioner Loyola, Commissioner Flood and student rep Hanner. Um, uh, we were the banner keepers and uh, Commissioner Flood was in the was in the, the wonderful posh ride with uh, council member uh, Grace Garner. So it was pretty cool. But um, happy Pride to everybody. And also, um, as we know, uh, November is Native American Heritage Month. We want to definitely uh, pay honor to our Native American community here in, in the desert and everywhere um, on this month. But for me, every day is Native American History and Heritage Month. So um, I, we definitely want to definitely look at I, ways. Again, I, I look at the master calendar as a very great opportunity to look at these um, proclamations also. I think we've been doing this throughout the year. And this is you know one of the things I've been very, very interested in as a commissioner too, is to see how we can effectively use the master calendar in, in these ways to sort of identify proclamations and, and obviously communities who've been under or um, overlooked. So I think that's one of the great opportunities as, as a human rights commissioner, we could look at that. Um, I think we should do that going forward as well. Um, we do have um, Thursday is our Veterans Day um, parade, and not just Veterans Day, but Veterans Day parade in Palm Springs. So I, we did send, a, send out a reminder this uh, today. Thank you, Jay. Um, so if anyone um, can volunteer to be part of the parade again, we, we have I have the banner. We could get it going. It's an afternoon parade. It, it starts at three thirty. Um, so we'll probably you know we can definitely do um, an, we could assemble a, a, a good thirty minutes before that. Um, it starts off at Ramon uh, and um, Palm Canyon, and, and walks up. It walks north on Palm Canyon, so that gives you a sense of the the map. It takes about thirty to forty minutes to walk, uh, you know, to, to do this parade in itself. But we're there to honor our veterans, um, and I know that um, we have a very, very, um, I mean, an amazing veterans community. I'm, I'm, I'm a grandchild and. Our family is a military family too, so we, you know, we definitely want to honor those who are, who've gone, who've passed, but also those who are who are living veterans. And um, I, I hope you can all look at that email um, and sign up. And just give us a sense. If you do want to bring family, let me know. That way, we could keep that number uh, correct with the the parade organizers. Um, I my all my information is in that email as well, so feel free to reach out to me. We also have the uh, Transgender Day of Remembrance this month. It's on Saturday, November 20th. Please mark your calendars for that. There are a few uh, things going on and the, the annual thing that happens at City Hall will be at five o'clock. And um, I know the Commission Andrade, you, you, uh, maybe you could give us a little, um, a little story of how it goes every year because we didn't get to, a lot of us didn't get to do that last year. Yes, we, uh... My husband and I attended last year and we what we did was we took the banner and we put it across our vehicle and they let us park close by where where people could see that we were in support of the event. Um, essentially what it is is uh, um, a reading of the names of all the transgender population whose lives have been sacrificed in in um, in um, misunderstanding and hate crimes 
and uh, it's very emotional. Uh, several people take turns reading, and there's a candlelit, a candlelit vigil. Um, it, it lasts a couple of hours, probably. It's uh, standing. You stand, and the speakers rotate and come up to the podium. Um, but it's, it's a, a, a very fitting and, and nice uh, uh, tribute to that population. So if you have a chance to go, even for a little bit of the time, if you can't stay for the entire reading, um, to at least show your support for those lost. And thank you, uh, Commissioner Andrade. And, and, and since we're post-pandemic in, in a sense, we're actually they're actually bringing back the resource tables. So we, I believe, and I'll get this confirmation or whether or not we can table and be you know present at a table versus just a drive-through presence this year. So we'll, we'll get that information to everybody before the 20th of this month. But again, um, get back to me when you, if you can about uh, this Thursday. And thank you, everybody. Thank you, Commissioner Ramaran and Commissioner Andrade. And just, just a point of inquiry, is there, when I hear master calendars, I think of an actual calendar. Is there a math? A viewable master calendar or the ones that we uh, yeah there, there's a city's calendar if everyone goes to the website for our <laughs> city we do have the general calendar um if i think if everyone um follows that and you could yeah yes uh, commissioner loyola has so actually if if you are also able to download the app the city app mm -hmm. it has direct access to every event that the city is participating on so that would be an easy access to the calendar as well. Yeah, and that's a very good um, question to uh, Commissioner Vignola because it does it feels like a misnomer, but I think it's 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 an opportunity for us to look at how our community um, and the master calendar to look at what how are we involved in the in the larger community as a master calendar. And I, the app is great. Thank you, Commissioner Loyal. And we also have if you send an email to Denise Goolsby, um, you'll you'll get um, the updates. The you know including all of the commissions. And everything so uh, and if you look at that master calendar online it gives you the highlights of things that are happening within the month but clearly it gets into the you know the nitty-gritty of smaller pro programming too but there are highlights there usually okay yeah it's good i get a lot of this stuff from denise so does the human rights commission input things to the master calendar or are we only piggybacking on what's already on the master calendar. We could do both. I mean, that's the whole thing about the master calendar. We can actually build, you know, populate it, but we could we definitely are we're looking at how other um, or you know agencies within the city are are using it okay. too. But yeah, we could, if we have things that we want to populate that, that's a very good point. We should definitely get them to um to you. To, yeah, to me, and then we'll get it to, <laughs> <laughs> to the okay the proper folks who who um, that helps me out. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. Okay, um, Main Street liaison, that would be the chair, so I'll skip that. Unless you, are you done, Commissioner Ramarant? Okay, they wanna cut you off. Um, I just have, a, I guess I'm up next for the organized neighborhoods of Palm Springs, 1 PS. I just wanted to let the commission know at the last meeting on Tuesday, October 12th, um, Mayor Pro Tem Milton reported that the Access Center on El Cielo for the unhoused um, under the very professional management of Martha's Village had served 200 clients with wraparound services and that the city has, she reiterated, the city has a major commitment to improving services to the homeless. Um, the other thing I picked up during the meeting was council member Woods announced that the city will be holding a strategic planning retreat. And he said residents and the larger community would be included to look for more information soon. Um, I don't know, Jay, if you have any additional information about that strategic planning retreat, but it, it triggered a thought to me that that might be an opportunity for Human Rights Commission commissioners to also attend, I don't know. I'm just throwing that out, um, and I hope it's appropriate to do that during this meeting. But um, I wanted to mention those two things about the one PS 
meeting last October. I don't have uh, complete information on the um, strategic planning session other than I, I believe one session is planned for November 20th, but that might actually be uh, a closed session meeting. And then a second meeting is planned for November 30th, and that may be the public meeting. Oh, okay. And Okay, how would we know if we can participate as human rights commissioners at the public strategic planning session? Uh, I think just any, uh, it would be a public comment. It, it, it's just uh, as individuals. Otherwise, it would have to have been noticed or will need to be noticed as a joint meeting again if it's going to be uh, human rights commissioners and the city council. I, I guess what I want to say is you can definitely speak in your capacity as a human rights commissioner. Um, I would be careful to, you know, the message, it, careful speaking as the commission, as an individual, uh, you know, saying I represent the commission because that would be something that the entire commission would have taken a position on. So that's really the distinction I want to make. Any comments, feel free, feel absolutely free. And, um, uh, uh, you know, it's just uh, speaking as a commission, uh, we'd have to be careful. Okay. So since we're not going to have a human rights commission meeting prior to that public strategic planning retreat, I think you said November 30th, I guess my Follow-up question would be to the commissioners that are present. I mean, is there, do we want to speak or as a commission, do we want to speak as a, com, as a full body commission at that public meeting? Or if individual commissioners want to speak, they should speak as individual commissioners. Can, can I clarify one more thing? Okay. Um, the matrix exercise we did was for this strategic planning session. So the commission has submitted uh, its input to the council and it may be good to clarify that to be on hand if they have questions, but uh, they definitely have the input on Human Rights Commission's priorities uh, for the upcoming year. And they've accepted it as presented or is this now their opportunity to amend it or the city manager to I'm it's It's, it's a dialogue. <laughs> it, can, it can be exactly as you say, they accept it, or it can be they say, why don't we work with the Human Rights Commission to figure out something else? And we don't know if that's the case. Okay, so the, what, what the priority matrix that was in our packet is what's before them and they'll look, discuss it in closed session, presumably on the 20th and then public, in a public setting on the 30th. And that's my guess. It, okay. Uh, I've, I've just heard uh, uh, limited information that uh, uh, the November 20th meeting, it may be an open meeting. So we'll, I'll, I'll, you know, we'll have to uh, uh, get you that clarifying information once it's set. But I did hear in a staff meeting today that, you know, a lot of this could be done in a closed session meeting to prepare for an open meeting, so. Okay. Well, I, I, I don't know how the other commissioners feel about it. I don't, I'm not, I, I don't know if there's any, if you have any, want to have any discussion or what, but I just wanted to make the other commissioners aware of that strategic planning meeting. I don't know if we have a role or not, but um, that's basically my report as the liaison to 1PS. I'm happy to answer any questions or if anyone has any comments they want to make.
so the I guess the next item is cultural affairs report, but I don't know who makes that report. Does anybody know who makes that report? Well, there's one thing uh, under that is the uh, Desert Highland Gateway uh, States Community oh. Association. So, okay, I'm usually the one that speaks up on that sometimes. Right. Uh, so I was I'll, missing I'll, the little A. I didn't see the little <laughs> A, so I, didn't, I thought that was a whole separate thing. Okay, uh, okay so but anyway, under the uh, Desert Highland Gateway the state's community association. Uh, as you may know, the uh, city council voted four to one to uh, locate the uh, homeless navigation center uh, close to that neighborhood. And uh, to, to put it mildly, a lot of, uh, some of the people in that community are not happy with that. The uh, vote was four to one and the uh, uh, city council member, uh, Grace Garner voted uh, no because that's her district. Uh, and uh, a couple of weeks ago, that were, that was a, uh, uh, she held a uh, sort of a, a Zoom forum of the uh, people in, the, in her district. And there were over, I was on that Zoom, about 60 people or so. And by my count, I think 90% uh, did not want that in, the, in that section. But anyway, it's voted. And um, so I don't know what the next step is other than I think they will proceed because that, that land, that property has been uh, bought by the city, will be bought by for about six million, I think. But um, just to say that they had contacted me, not so much, I mean, I'm, I live in the district also, but the secretary of the association, the community association is aware that I'm on the Human Rights Commission and she was asking if there's anything I could do. I said, really no, uh, I, I'm concerned because I am a resident of the district. But uh, anyway, it was uh, something she wanted because I am sometimes the, the rep that goes to the meetings when they had the meetings at, in person. And for other reasons, I have not been able to go to any of those Zoom meetings. But anyway, I just wanted to throw that out that the uh, community uh, association, the, the people in that area, because it's an area that's I had some problems. I mean, there's uh, crime, there's um, uh, drug dealings and um, sort of some gang related activity that the police are very aware of. So I just threw that out. That's about all I have on that. And um, the next day I move on down to the veterans liaison. I echo what uh, uh, Commissioner Ramaran said about the um, Veterans Day Parade. I, I hope to join him in that parade. And so that's about all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Flood. Um, I guess I'm up next as the lead on the Youth Education Affairs Standing Committee. I am very pleased to report that we had our first inaugural um, Youth Education Affairs Standing Committee meeting just prior to this meeting at 4.30 today via Zoom. Uh, Commissioner Ro um, Robles, myself, and student representative Hanner, along with uh, Jay, were on the Zoom call. Uh, I think it was a very productive organizational meeting. Uh, we did identify some areas that we would intend on focusing. Um, we certainly encourage any of you to also participate as commissioners uh, during the public comment section of our future meetings. We're hoping to meet more regularly to try to address some of the um, issues regarding our youth and education affairs and how to engage our other entities and stakeholders, uh, as well as the student population, youth, parents, et cetera. Um, we are hoping to, we are tentatively planning to have a follow-up meeting. It's a public meeting on Tuesday, November uh, 23rd, the Tuesday before Thanksgiving at 5.30 and we'll work with Jay to post an agenda and get that out uh, to the public as well. But um, I'd like to thank my fellow committee members for their participation 
we're real excited that we're going to be moving forward on that, on youth and education affairs on behalf of the Human Rights Commission. And we, again, welcome any comments, input, any thoughts you have, um, commissioners, to help us address those issues and get an action plan going forward. Uh, that's all I have on that. Um, Commissioner Andrade, do you want to speak on the commission development mediation, if you have anything? Let's see. I reported last uh, meeting that I didn't receive my certificate, but I now have it in hand. Um, I think that it's important to recognize that three seated commissioners are now certified as having completed the, the um, uh, process and the class and have passed. So I would say that in terms of community mediation, if that was something we were called upon to perform for any reason that we do have three qualified people to, to do that. Um, I know that we probably need to stay up to date with that stuff. It's been a while. Um, and and we, would, we would maybe need a little remedial training. Uh, we do have a lot of printed re resources though as well. So um, I hope that's what the city wanted was to, in the event that we were called upon to perform the mediation services that are called for in our charter, that we would have people that were seated that were able to do it and we have three. So I just, I'm happy to report that. Uh, Commissioner Flood, Commissioner Ramaran and myself. So thank you for the opportunity to participate in the training and to, to serve in this capacity should the need arise. Great, congratulations on getting your certificate. It's good, good to know. Um, thank you for your report. Then Commissioner Ramaran on the Ad Hoc Committee Clean Indoor Air and Health Protection Draft Ordinance with Sustainability Commission. That's a mouthful. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. I, um, I, I know that um, Chair DeHart actually had asked for it, it to be pulled for our review. So I think everyone received that in, in the attachment, right? And I think we've been we've had the opportunity to. Uh, did everyone receive that email? It, it include it's an, it's included in the in the one that Annie sent us all. Uh, Jane Annie sent. Um, I, I know I know that the chair pulled it, so I'm I, I, I'm I'm not going to assume what um, he wants to necessarily talk about, but I could give you a quick update of where sustainability went with it last month in October. Does that would that be helpful? And and Jay, please like correct me <laughs> if there's anything that I mess up on. <laughs> but um, they uh, they are in the process of drafting. Um, what what they've done is you know this process of this ordinance, this drafting of the ordinance has been um, actually a very long process. It's been over, I think it's over a year, right, Jay? Even even longer, I think. Um, oh, three years, oh, well. I, I see, I, I've already totally repressed that. Um, <laughs> but, but, but for the year that I was um, coordinating it from our commission, just to give you all that level of transparency, like it was a matter of just, um, again, presenting it to us as a commission so you could review the, the language. And of course, we are very much charged with looking at the human rights sort of issues may, that, that, that may be um, indicative in an ordinance like this. And this ordinance is about uh, clean air um, and in particular um, around um, smoking. And it's also expanded into cannabis smoke, cannabis air, if you will, clean air. Um, clean air is inclusive of all that. Um, but the um, the areas that they did that the sustainability sustainability uh, commission covered or looked at uh, last month or if you will pulled out in terms of con uh, having a conversation were around the uh, the issues of prohibition within like multifamily units like apartments and condominiums um, um, that that as well as um, public areas like you know the the public areas around the bars and arenas for instance um, so the, um, what what I have to report is that if if, if no one uh, watched that meeting. Uh, the, the, the report back was that former mayor core support and, and current mayor Holsey support um, the, the portions in that in the ordinance that are that we're talking about as well as so so they look at the sort of the reviewing that and, and building the, the report uh, the staff report for the city council to review. 
Um, so that, uh, in the process, they're also going to be checking in with the agencies within the city that deal with cannabis. Um, uh, there was there was also a discussion about the removal of the no of the, so there would no there would be no private right of action portion of it is that correct Jay um, uh, if you remember that um, I, I don't know if there's anything you could um, help define about that but it, it's about um, it, it's really about sort of how third parties could report on people and it's, you know that you know this would, this ordinance would be in effect um, a way for folks to uh, report smoke as a nuisance so they would they would report it to the city as such. And, and the city would handle it in that sense. The equity questions were about uh, people being able to uh, smoke, um, I think, in, in those areas of, uh, that I listed earlier. And um, the main arguments were, of course, that the um, organizations like the American Lung Association have really supported that we need to do these kind of um, uh, pro prohibiting smoking in multi multifamily units and like apartments, condominiums, and public areas to help make sure that people are not affected by secondhand smoke. So we, I think we, I think we've discussed that here as well, or at least folks who have read the ordinance draft uh, would be able to read through all, the whole text and find that. Um, and yes, again, that the American Lung Association very much supports that kind of, these kind of ordinances because uh, folks who are living in units where a secondhand smoke gets into, you know, the, the air systems and it could be dangerous again for those in adjacent units. Um, that um, that motion again, as they're drafting the the the, uh, the sustainability is at motion passed. So they're they're actually in the process of developing the, the staff report for the st the city council to review. I totally went you know full circle on that. But I, Jay, is there anything I could else I could report on with regards to that? Mm -hmm. If there are any questions, I hope I can answer them. I think you did fine, Commissioner Alron. So. so do we have to do anything with the draft ordinance that was in Annie's packet? Or I mean, I tried to read it. I read the, I skipped all the whereas because that's all like background. I just did focused on the amendments to the municipal code, but I wasn't really sure what I was supposed to do, if anything, except read it. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's that's a good part. Of, that's what we need to have. And I think we need to have all the commissioners read it. And it's okay. very, very, very very important ordinance that apparently it's taken three years so like if we're at if we're on the precipice of like something happening we need to be very much again aware as a commission because you know equity issues will, equity issues will come up and this will be in, in regards to like businesses and you know people's um rights if you will in, in the public area <laughs> and and employees rights and there's a whole bunch of, of folks who are protected in this ordinance if you if you've read through it so i hope i hope those were in, in, you know pretty you know, clear. Could I ask a clarification question for Commissioner Ramaran? Please. Um, did you did you indicate that that uh, Mayor Holstage and um, Councilman Coors are in favor of the multi-unit uh, prohibition staying in the ordinance? That's what I understood from the meeting. And again, Jay, I'm not sure if that's correct, but I, if I watched the meeting again, but it was mentioned that they they, they had seen some language that's, that discusses the, the prohibition of, of smoking, for instance, in multifamily units. And, and in this is in, in privately owned multifamily, not, not publicly subsidized or publicly or federally owned, but we're talking about privately owned multi-unit. Is that correct, Jay? That's correct. I, I believe that's correct, yeah, because the... Uh, Okay. okay. Is that correct? Well, you know, I don't know those details actually um, as to where the uh, mayor and councilman, uh, 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 you know, uh, place place their votes. But uh, you know, that is, I think, one of the most challenging issues that has kept us going for so long is the rights of an individual in their private residence to do what they want to do. So, right. Yeah, and I, I'm sorry, I should clarify that those were conversations that um, Commissioner Baker and other commissioners may have had with uh, former Mayor Coors and current Mayor Holstage. Not a vote. There was no vote yet, by the way. Right, correct. Right. Okay, thank you. But again, we may be returning to this in the next meeting if um, uh, because Chair Hart had had pulled the item for us to to review again. Okay. But as far as you know, the draft ordinance that Annie sent out in the 
packet is still the draft ordinance. That's correct. It hasn't been changed at all no. yet. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thanks. I think I'm on track. Okay. I appreciate that clarification. I think. I'm on track too. I think. <laughs> um, all right. The next up on the agenda is community service awards application process. I know there was material in our packet regarding that. I don't know if the chair was planning to just speak to this process or Jay, were you going to speak to the process since I guess you're the recipient of any nomination forms? I saw <laughs> my name is on that form. <laughs> So uh, why don't I go on and take a shot at this? Um, some of you uh, may have seen this in the past. Each year, the Human Rights Commission uh, does uh, community service awards and uh, it's for individual recipients. Uh, it can also be an organization for benefiting um, volunteer service or benefiting uh, people in Palm Springs. And so as you look over the criteria, you'll see it can be both for-profit and non-profit. And um, mm -hmm. process-wise, we will need to put together an ad hoc committee to evaluate the um, recommendations that come in and um, come up with recommendations for the next Human Rights Commission meeting. So if we could, uh, maybe see if we have a few volunteers to review the uh, applications that come in. I think I see Commissioner Andrade's hand up. Yeah. Are you volunteering, Commissioner Andrade, or have a I question? Am. Yes, I am. Okay. And Commissioner Robles? Yes, Are I'm volunteering. Volunteering. How many members do you need, Jay, on this ad hoc? I think two or three human rights subcommittee. Great. Yeah, two or three is fine. So if it's two, we can do that. Um, and then they'll bring the recommendations to the next Human Rights Commission meeting where everyone can uh, deliberate on the recommendations from, from the uh, ad hoc subcommittee. Great. Thank you, Commissioner Robles and Andrade for volunteering. And I, my only question, Jay, would be, are we as commissioners, I know we're not eligible to receive an award, are we permitted to disseminate information about this community service award in the process for applying? Absolutely. Or do we just direct them to you if they... Uh, I I think it would be fine to get the information out to people who may want to nominate people. Okay. Yes. And and as commissioners, we can nominate ourselves. I mean, not, okay, let me back up. We can place nominations ourselves. We can nominate votes. So uh, keep that in mind that if you know people that you feel are worthy of this, you can look over the criteria that, that we encourage um, commissioners to to actually uh, be involved in the nomination process. Um, if you look back, I know that the city on its website has previous uh, winners or acknowledge uh, people that have been acknowledged. So it's important to look at that because there, you know, a lot of people have already been recipients of of the award. But so take a look at that. But yeah, be creative um, looking at the, the criteria and the groups and, and you know, kind of expounding on, on who you think might be eligible for something like this. It's a great ceremony. I think we, I, I hope we could do it in person. Jay, I don't know if you think there's an opportunity for us to do it in person this year or not. Uh, it's hard to say, but in person is a lot better than Zoom, but Zoom was okay. Um, but you know, in person is lovely in council chambers where you get to actually present the awards, and I, I think it's just a great thing. So, so take some time and look at the people in the community that you know and that you think could uh, qualify for acknowledgement in this area. 
Great. Is there a maximum number of awardees or is that up to the commission when they vote whether to accept or reject the recommendations of the subcommittee? I think there's yeah. a maximum number, Jay, is there? I mean, it's just, you know, the, I think it's just everything is, de is decided on its own merit. And um, so, you know, that, yeah, I, I think we've had, we've had less than certain years and more than others. So okay. it just depends on, yeah, the, the people that are, that are nominated and you'll see on the application what the criteria is and that kind of thing. So absolutely um, spend some time looking at it. And again, you can also forward it to people that you know that might, you know, okay. you know someone that you don't. Great, thank you. I think that sounds like a really worthwhile endeavor to, to pursue. So I know I will take a look at the past honorees and I encourage everybody to think about nominating individuals um, based on the general criteria. Uh, as well as organizations that might be uh, eligible for this community right. service award. One other thing that I just want to throw in here is that we spend a lot of time without a, a student representative, and now we have one. And um, I correct me again, Jay, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but um, we could have younger people that are nominated as well. They don't have to be necessarily you know, uh, old folks, <laughs> for lack of a better term. <laughs> I mean, you know, um, Lily, you might know people in school that are just, you know, awesomely involved in human rights things. Um, maybe you'll be nominated. I don't know. But I, I just think it's nice to have the opportunity to expand our, our um, uh, list of, of nominees. We, we've been through a lot of the people that are the obvious ones in this city as you look at when you see the list. But I don't think there's a prohibition. Jay, correct me if, if you think I'm wrong or you wanna look it up. There's no, no for some reason I'm thinking we had some of the uh, youth social justice leaders awarded in the recent Yes, months. you're right, we okay. did, we absolutely did. So yes, Lily, take a look at the application and consider, consider the people that you know, please. Okay, enough about that. Great, thank you. Very exciting. Look forward to, and just a reminder that those are nomination, nomination forms need to be submitted to Jay by Wednesday, December 1st, 2021, I assume by close of business. Um, and I guess Jay will get those to our ad hoc yes. committee members for review and they'll present their list to us on December 13th at the full Human Rights Commission meeting. Um, and we'll vote at that time whether to accept or reject their recommendations. Um, mark your calendars for February 14, 2022, as that's the when the Community Service Awards will be presented, hopefully in the City Council Chamber, maybe. Um, so with that, I'll move on to ask if there's any commissioners, staff, I think that's Jay, and or student comments. If anyone has any, this would be your opportunity to make them. I don't see any hands up or nothing. Oh, that you want to say something, Commissioner Ramoran? Yes, just <laughs> uh, both. I, mean, I'm, <laughs> um, I actually just want to re remind everybody that, and I think everyone gets this, if you're on Facebook, you'll get the reminder about Palm Springs uh, registering this year. Um, so please get it, if you, if you can get involved. Um, they've already been having um, some of the public meetings, public hearings. Um, and the next one actually, there is another public hearing happening on the 9th of, of December. Just to, this is actually a reminder about that. So if you go to, um, of uh, mappalmsprings.org, you'll get the whole full calendar of what's happening. Um, and you could see the breakdown of where the community workshops are happening um, throughout the city of Palm Springs, as well as the phases um, and, you know, sort of the goal towards March of next year um, to have uh, the city of Palm Springs redistributed. Um, my other thing, and actually it's very much related because uh, Commissioner Flood brought it up because, you know, as we're both um, 
residents of District 1, and you saw, I think this is a very important issue, you know, when we look at homelessness in our, in our city, because we, what, we, what we just um, witnessed in, in, it's, in it's the city council meeting last week was that it was very much like the discussion was about District 1. You know, we have to look at the sort of disparities of our city. Um, and and listen and to listen to our constituents you know we actually <laughs> as a commission we're actually at large when you think about it we're not necessarily distributed by <laughs> by commission but we get to listen to the whole city but we do have to look at how um portions of our city are overlooked and um and are you know definitely uh, the discussion was very very difficult i'm going to just say this as, as, a, as an announcement mm -hmm. because um you heard the class disparities the real sort of level of, of sort of denigrating people because you know the class that they're in so i'm really really hoping that maybe you know and this is not necessarily an issue we'll bring up it may be something that could be uh, uh, brought into our agenda jay um, but i'm not sure how to, to go about that i think it do, it's a matter of the liaison sort of like effectively working at, on that but again we're not in, in the room to talk about issues right now because it would be a total issue but i want to just use that, this opportunity to say you know we do have these opportunities to watch our city council meetings and listen to the language because it really does have an effect on a lot of people um and that vote that our, that council member garner made was a very very strong vote and it was it was very very difficult so i want to say that as a as a resident of district one and as a sit as a resident of palm springs so thank you hmm. i have another issue totally different but um jay you sent us uh earlier today a notice of the measure j community uh initiated projects application forum that the city has a million dollars in um uh, measure j funds that uh can be used for community initiated projects and um the Human Rights Commission um, is an eligible uh, entity or party to apply for something like that. Um, the, I, I have a bunch of ideas, um, which I won't go into right now, but here's what my concern is, is that the submission deadline is December 2nd. So we don't even have another meeting between now and then. So how would we go about submitting something as a, as a commission, as an organization, without the opportunity to get a vote on it? Um, that's my question. Should we decide that that was something we wanted to do? It would call for a special meeting yeah. to have everyone vote and um, hmm. make and do that. Uh, unless, <clears throat> you know, and I'm not sure how well this would work. You delegate, you will right now or the uh, full commission and uh, you delegate to a uh, subgroup to make that recommendation, but it wouldn't come back to the full commission. So I think special meeting is most likely what would have to happen. So could we create an ad hoc committee this evening to discuss possible, um, again, time is, is of the essence, um, but could we create an ad hoc committee tonight, tonight to discuss possible uh, submissions, possible areas to submit, um, things of that nature? Would that work or would we need, and then maybe call for a full special meeting? I don't know. Again, the time limit, the time is cl very close, so. Yes, you can create an ad hoc meeting and, and um, <clears throat> come up with recommendations, bring it back to a special meeting of a full commission if you like. Okay, um, so uh, could I make a motion that we create an ad hoc committee to look at the possibility of applying for Measure J community initiated projects and that yeah so th i think that's it that we create a committee to look at that and to go over ideas okay was that second mr romer okay very good okay uh 
Was there a discussion, further discussion on that? Uh, uh, yes, I love Commissioner Andrade. I'm so glad you brought that up. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I, and I, I, the, this is sort of the, you know, when we're reminded, like, how can we effectively do stuff and, and we, we've given these timelines? I'm so glad you brought it up that way. Thank you. I totally support this. And if we, if we if there are some things that come up in this in your in your ad hoc committee, I think it'd be great to see how we can very much you know take advantage of that. That's a lot of money. So does that mean you want to be on the ad hoc committee? Okay, sure. <laughs> Do we need Anybody to name, else? name our members tonight? Um, you know. I'm happy to. I think it's a great idea too. I'm happy to participate on the okay. ad hoc committee to look at putting. To, and I'm assuming your Commissioner Andrade, your goal here is we would come up as the ad hoc committee come up with the actual application for a community initiated project, which you alluded to. You have some ideas about, and then present that at the special membership special meeting of the full commission for their approval prior to December 1. It would have that's, to get that's the that's the um impression that that I'm left with is that we would meet, we would decide on something, we would put together, you know, um the application is not a big it's not it's not it's it's doable. Yes. Um, but but then we would ask we have to probably be quick to to get the um, meeting because we'd need full approval, correct, Jay, for the for to go forward with that application. That's correct. Okay. So I'm just I'm just wondering, Jay, if you're given that we have Thanksgiving in there, and you're kind of the driver as to when this special meeting of the full commission could be. Do you have availability prior to the deadline for the application? That we could pencil in our special meeting of the Human Rights Commission, or do you have to run that by the chair? Uh, I would touch base with the chair, but we definitely uh, need a date for the special meeting. I don't know if the 29th works, or if that's to, um, you know, maybe we could break some rules with the 5 30 time and. Uh, I mean, would that give you enough time to get our, if the, assuming the full commission approved the application, would that give you enough time to get it before whoever needs to see it on December 1? Would it meet the deadline? Um, I, I believe so. Okay. Uh, I, I think it's an internal process and, uh, you know, it's, it's a commission of the, um, uh, you know, uh, of just like yourselves staff by a city staff so uh, i believe we we could, I could walk down the hall and hand it over so does that work for most of the commissioner because obviously we'd have to have a quorum of the full commission would that work if we tentatively say a special meeting which would only focus on this one agenda item I, is that correct jay uh yeah. it's 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 good to plan that way, but if something else comes up, something else comes up. So we and how much wait, Monday the 29th. How much time do we need to to um, to uh, record or what do you call it to post that meeting? As a special meeting, a 24 hours notice. 20, okay, 24 hours. Okay, I'd say the 29th is good. Tentatively, and we'll run it by the chair and vice chair. Yes, and definitely. How they're feeling, and they're welcome to join us in this ad hoc effort, <laughs> for sure. So. But Jay, do you have to communicate this with the vice chair and vice chair because we can't? That's right. I will, and as individually the, do that. We've got uh, <laughs> three members, so uh, they can you can take on one more member without being a quorum of the commission. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. So I think did we vote on the motion to establish the ad hoc or do we need to still vote on the motion to establish the ad hoc? Still need to vote. But we had a motion on the floor from Commissioner Andrade and I believe it was seconded by Commissioner Ramaran, maybe? Yes, that's correct. So any is there any more discussion on this motion? Seeing and hearing none. 
do you, can we show by uh, show of hands the, all those in favor of establishing the ad hoc committee? And, uh, any opposed? None opposed. Any abstentions? I believe the motion carries to establish the ad hoc consisting of myself, Commissioner Andrade, and Commissioner Ramoran at this time. Great. Um, any other comments from any commissioners or staff or students? Then next thing on the agenda is topical newsworthy items. Unfortunately, I'm not prepared. I don't have any topical newsworthy items like the chair normally does. So I'll offer up if anyone has anything newsworthy they wish to bring up. Um, I'm certainly open to that. Just quickly uh, uh, welcoming our new police chief who was right. uh, today. Started today. Started today, but I saw that he marched in our pride parade and is ready to, to you know, completely be involved in this community. So welcome to him. Great, thank you. Um, okay, agenda items for the next regular meeting of the Human Rights Commission. I don't have anything specifically. I know if any other commissioners have something. I thought I heard Commissioner Rammer and mention something that you thought might be a good agenda item for our next meeting. Did you want to no, I, I move that forward or? No, I, I was mainly saying that would be something that, you know, on the subcommittee committee level would be handled, yeah. So I guess if there are, I'm not really clear on the process of establishing the agenda items for the next HRC meeting, but Jay, if we have anything for prior to the next, for the next agenda, do we just email them to you directly? And then they get put on the agenda, or does it go before yeah, I'm the say you it committee? to the chair to heart and myself? And, and that way, you know, we, we know. And, you know, sometimes the agenda can get kind of crowded. So uh, it, it they'll look at it and figure out what can go and what may be able to wait. Um, so it sounds like there's going to be some discussion about uh, Measure J funds uh, at the next meeting. So uh, with a well, special meeting, because we'll be adjourning to a special meeting on November 29th. Right, right. Yeah, that agenda is pretty much in place, but <laughs> could possibly have an additional item or two on it. But okay. as far as for things for December 13th, I don't, don't think we have anything right tonight to add to that December 13th meeting, but I'm sure the chair will work with Jay on that. Um, announcements, I don't have any announcements. I'm not aware of any announcements. Jay, are there any announcements do you think the chair would have made or vice chair would have made? No, I, I can't think of any. Okay. Any last call, Any anybody have anything they wanna add before we make a motion to adjourn? I guess the motion will be to adjourn to our special meeting on November 29th, 2021. I'm not sure we established a time. Maybe, is it 5.30, Jay, or? If that works for the uh, commissioners, 5.30, if you'd like to suggest another time, the council is asking for 5.30 right now, so. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead and make the motion to adjourn this meeting to our special meeting of the Human Rights Commission scheduled for Monday, November 29th, 2021 at 5.30 p.m. Do I have a second on the motion to adjourn? I second. Thank you. Commissioner Robles seconded. All those in favor say aye or raise your hand. Any opposed? 
Seeing none, any abstentions? I guess I should have said any discussion, but I apologize. Um, I think that's it. I think our meeting's adjourned. Appreciate your indulgence and patience with me as acting vice chair. So have a great evening, everyone. And we'll see you on November 29th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, Commissioner. Oh, Commissioner Andretti. Uh, so the ad hoc, will you send? Yes. How are we going to do the yes. ad hoc? I will I will get in touch with you. And I Commissioner Rauran, right? Absolutely. Both of you. Yes. OK. Thank Is that you. permissible, Jay, as an ad hoc? It's we can ad hoc. Okay. Yeah, okay. We're ad hoc and we're only three, so we can do that, right? Okay. Right. I'll get in okay. touch with you. Thank you for stepping up and doing that. You did a great Thank job. Thank you. Sounds exciting. Good See you soon.